Well, Jim, let's uh, brighten things up and move on from the dark side to, uh, I have a story here from the real news, from the, not that the Bagwell family news isn't real news, but the real news, something from a real newspaper, something happening in the real world. Yes, what would that real thing be? I have a headline here. Polio Paul Alexander, who Ugh. spent 72 years inside Iron Lung, dead at 78, and it is believed that he is the last known person, I guess not believed, he is the last known person living in an Iron Lung, and we always reference it talking about, you talk about it with Chief J. Strongbow, and here it is, the last known user, uh... Living, of such a thing. Yeah, the, the last person living inside an iron lung, this will never be used again, more than likely. What do you think? Well, the irony, the irony of the whole thing, that the, the last guy to be put in an iron lung outlived Chief J. Strongbow. That's the irony of the whole thing. And for those of you who do not know what the fuck we're talking about, but a bunch of people tweeted me about this also and had the picture of the the guy smiling there in his iron lung Whenever Jay Strongbow would criticize a bad match or the match sucked or whatever, they say, I oh, he could have held that match in an iron lung. And one time we were having a meeting and Strongbow wasn't even there. Wasn't even there. But it was like somebody, maybe it was Bruce or just anybody mocking him, said, oh, they could have held that match in an iron lung. And Vince turned around and said, what the fuck does that even mean? And nobody ever knew, really. But he was famous for it. And if you've got the article in front of you, they, they don't use these things anymore. They They were for people with some difficulty breathing they would slide you in this thing and literally it, it, you had to stay in it because it, it breathed for you or what is the past tense of breathe breathed for you breathed for you um so you had to lay in this fucking thing and now they quit using them obviously this is the last guy but did this guy have an option of getting out of this fucking thing what do they have now? A no. travel pack or an implant? Or how do they do it now instead of the, the iron lung? I don't believe there was any option for him. He had to live in there. There was no option for him at this stage of his life. And Well, how'd they get everybody else out of one? They died. Oh. Well, I guess that'll do it. Alexander, so, Polio Paul Alexander. I hate, I hate the fact they give him the name Polio Paul. That polio seems pa Okay, well, cool. apparently polio would play a part in this somehow. He contracted polio in 1952 when he was six years old and living with his family in suburban Dallas. Here's a quote. I lost everything. The ability to move. My legs would not hold me up. And then I couldn't breathe. He was rushed to the hospital and placed in an iron lung in which he would remain for the rest of his life. Wow. An airtight capsule that sucks oxygen through negative pressure, allowing the lungs to expand and the patient to breathe. Wow. Laying on his back. Yeah. In a, inside a, a metal apparatus for 72 years. The ventilators, which were invented in the 20s, lined hospital wards amid polio outbreaks that plagued the U.S. until the second half of the last century. In 1959, 1,200 Americans relied on an iron lung to stay alive but the machines gradually became less common after widespread distribution of the polio vaccine. In 1979, the U.S. was declared polio-free, and by 2014, there were only 10 Americans left using an iron lung. So there's a little bit of the background for you. Well, how long is it going to be before it comes back with all these anti-vaccine nuts that don't... Measles is back in Florida. If a disease can grow, it's got plenty of places to do it down there. Uh, how long is it going to be before we have to put up with polio because all these fucking crackpots don't want to give their fucking kids shots? Well, we shall find out. That was the, uh, I guess I shouldn't have but prefaced our, it our, by being happy news. but Our there's... best to polio, Paul, though, on getting out of that fucking machine. You think for the last 20 years he's been like, shoot me? No, he's living in his own way a very fruitful life he writes books apparently and he or he wrote books he got a uh, legal degree of some sort what 
He worked hard. He enjoyed his life. If he was younger, I'm sure he would have embraced video games. Would have had that going for him. What, the, what, the, what does he do to operate the video game? He has a stick. Th- they said here, hold on. Let me, uh, let's see. Or what would he have done to operate the video game, I should say? Or what does he do to operate anything? He graduated with a Juris Doctor from the University of Texas at Austin Law School in 1984. He subsequently went on to open his own law practice. What? He spent decades working in the legal field and was eventually able to leave the iron lung for minutes at a time. Minutes! After learning how to frog breathe. I I don't even know if I want to ask, but is there additional details to frog breathing? There's nothing here. I don't know what frog breathing. How do you open a law practice when you can't leave your machine except for minutes at a time eventually? Well, here we go. In 2020, he published his memoir, Three Minutes for a Dog, My Life in an Iron Lung. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sorry. Which... <laughs> Well, I get, he, hey, he's smart. You got to buy the book, apparently. <laughs> Which took five years to complete, given that he wrote the manuscript while confined to the cumbersome contraption. And it has here, like, a little stick that he would put in his mouth and has a pen attached to the end of it by rubber oh, bands. Oh, come on! By rubber bands, too. And he would use that to write. And next to it's a little cup with a straw, so he would use that, the straw, the bendy one at the top, to drink. And he's, well, you got to admire the perseverance. Exactly. There's always something to live for. That's the point. So you can write your memoirs, your memoirs with a fucking stick stuck in your fucking yap. Well, Jim, there's more stuff to, uh, by by the way, what an awful way to end the tribute to Polio Paul, but. Well, it's his. They shouldn't have given him a nickname like Polio Paul. That just sends the whole thing into farce and satire. 